Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Kohler, and this is Nancy, one of our standardized patients. The purpose of this training video is to teach medical students how to do a breast examination. And let me stress that this is a screening breast exam. It's not a diagnostic breast exam. What I mean by that is that the patient has no symptoms, uh, meaning the patient's just here for her yearly uh, uh, routine female checkup. She's not here because she felt a lump in her breast or she noticed a discharge from her nipple or a rash on her nipple. This is purely just a screening breast exam. Let me also stress at the start here that there is no gold standard breast examination. Uh, the various textbooks and resources that you read uh, might each uh, recommend a different sort of a technique to examine the breast. We're going to teach you today the vertical strip method and uh, insist that you learn this method while you're here at Loyola. Again, there's other methods and those uh, might be demonstrated by other physicians you work with, but for training purposes, we want you to be comfortable doing the vertical strip method. Probably the most important thing about doing a clinical breast exam, though, is not which specific technique you use, vertical strip versus concentric circles or so forth. It's the amount of time and the technique that you use doing the breast examination. Uh, you need to be systematic when you do the search for uh, lumps and abnormalities. You need to be very thorough. You need to use varying levels of pressure, especially when you get around the areola or nipple where the most amount of breast tissue is. Uh, you should probably be doing two or three levels of pressure with your circular sweeps at that position. A superficial uh, circular motion, a medium, and then a firmer or deeper uh, palpation, which is closer to the chest wall. None of that should be painful to the patient, uh, but it might be a little bit uncomfortable as you press more deeply. You're going to again use your three middle fingers and use your finger pads. You don't want to be jabbing at the patient with your fingertips. And also it's important to make sure your fingernails are trimmed. You don't want to be, when it's time for the axillary lymph node exam, have long fingernails that are going to be hurting the patient when you do that examination. And when you actually do the palpation, you're going to be making circular motions uh, about as if you're sweeping around the size of a dime or a, a nickel. Of course, it's always important to be attentive to the patient's draping during a breast examination. It's usually best to have the patient adjust her gown and her sheet herself rather than you as a doctor just sort of willy-nilly mo moving her gown or draping sheet. Again, you want to protect the patient's modesty and privacy. Privacy. Make sure that the door is shut uh, completely, that it's not just uh, ajar. Before you do the breast exam, too, ask about the woman's uh, menstrual cycle if she's still menstruating because there is an appropriate time to do the breast exam. Uh, again, a menstruating woman, you should do the breast exam about five to seven days after the onset of the period. You don't want to do it just before the period because then the breasts are somewhat uh, stimulated and engorged from the hormonal stimulation. So, Nancy, how long ago has it been since your period? One week. About one week. So, again, this is the ideal time to, to do the breast examination. If a woman is postmenopausal, you know, any day of the year is fine. If the woman's postmenopausal and on daily hormones, Again, any day is fine. However, if a postmenopausal woman's on cyclical hormones where she still has a period, then again, the same rule applies five to seven days after the onset of a period. Again, I can't stress enough, too, how important it is to be professional during this part of the examination. Uh, be very careful with the word choices that you make. Uh, tell the patient you're going to examine their breasts. Don't say you're going to feel their breasts or now it's time to touch your breasts. That can make the patient feel very uncomfortable, uh, and there's absolutely no place uh, for common or slang language uh, during this examination. And it's probably best also to have a chaperone in the room, especially if you have any sense of uneasiness uh, about the encounter. It's always best to have a, a chaperone uh, in the room and be cautious and prudent about that. So moving forward, let's talk about the actual breast exam itself. There's going to be three parts to the breast exam. Inspection of the breast with the patient seated at the edge of the exam table. Uh, the second part is where you're going to palpate for lymph nodes in both the axilla as well as the supraclavicular region. And then finally, you're going to have the patient lay down to do uh, the actual palpation of the breast tissue. But of course, before we begin any breast or any examination, we always start by washing our hands. So I'm going to first go ahead and wash my hands.
another technique that you could use for hand hygiene would also to be use the alcohol-based uh, hand gel. And again, if that's available in the room, that's an acceptable way uh, to cleanse your hands before the examination. So let's start off with inspection of the breast. So I'm going to, again, move in front of the patient. You can see she's seated at the edge of the table. And Nancy, I'll ask you to lower your gown to your waist. And there's four different positions we want you to inspect the, the patient. First of all, with their arms relaxed at the side, just like this. And as a physician, make sure you look not just in front of the patient, but look side to side and make sure you're seeing if there's any abnormalities uh, laterally in the breast tissue too. You're looking for things like uh, skin retraction, dimpling of the skin. You're looking to see if there's any discharge from the nipples. You're looking to see if there's any rash on the nipples also during this time. The second position is to ask the patient to raise their hands above their heads. And again, you're going to be inspecting from in front as well as on both sides. Good. The third position is to have the patient put their hands against their hips and press in. And of course, that tenses up the pectoral muscles and would bring out any deep uh, lesion from the chest wall or deeper breast tissue. And again, to look laterally as well as head on. And then fourth position for inspection, have the patient lean forward while they're pressing in. This is especially a helpful maneuver if the patient's large-breasted or has pendulous breasts. And again, you want to look laterally as well as head-on to see if there's any abnormality. And Nancy, I don't see any abnormality, so you can go ahead and raise your gown up. So that completes the inspection of the uh, breast tissue. You want to make sure when you're doing any part of the breast exam that you don't leave any periods of silence. Uh, I think the average woman is very uncomfortable about doing the breast examination and they interpret periods of silence as, uh-oh, the doctor found something. So if you can be natural and to keep talking during the breast examination, that helps to put the patient at ease. The second part of the examination is the uh, axillary exam. And for this, again, the patient can help you uh, in adjusting their gown. So Nancy, I'm going to ask you if you can lower your gown on the uh, right side here. Go ahead and lower this side. So you notice the way Nancy has done that, uh, she's preserved her modesty. She's kind of um, draped the gown in a diagonal. And so I still, as a physician, will have access to her axilla, but yet I'm not causing any undue uh, exposure either at this point in time. For the axillary exam, again, have the patient seated at the edge of the table. Uh, you do not need to wear gloves. There's no uh, expectation or requirement for gloves. And remember that there's three different areas of the axilla you're going to examine. You're going to examine against the chest wall, uh, and one swoop down is not enough. You need to make sure you cover the entire chest wall area. So you might need to make two or three swoops uh, with your hand. And then the anterior axillary fold, as well as the posterior axillary fold. So again, those are the three regions of the axilla you need to examine on every patient for a screening breast examination. Uh, it's important when you're doing this exam to reach high up into the axilla or armpit. Uh, it shouldn't cause pain, but it might make the patient feel a little bit uncomfortable. It's not enough just to kind of reach where the skin uh, meets your fingertips. You really need to reach up to get to the dome of the axilla before you go centrally and then come down with the sweep of your fingers. Um, uh, and the hardest part of this probably is to have the patient relax her arms. Uh, if she's holding up her arm and tensing her muscles, you're not going to get a thorough examination. So what you as a physician can do is to grab her arm, especially closer to the elbow or uh, mid-forearm, and support the weight of her arm uh, so that uh, the muscles are relaxed. And I'm going to take my, with my fingers together, I'm going to reach up to the dome of the axilla and then first start by uh, examining centrally. So you can relax your hand and all the way to the apex and I'm swooping down here and then a little further back, just pushing pressure, swooping down one more time. I'm going to come a little bit forward to again relax your arm, Nancy. Let it fall. Okay, and I don't feel any abnormality centrally. I'm going to examine the anterior axillary fold. I'm, I'm only going to use two fingers for this, but again, it's the same principle. I'm reaching high up in the axilla and swooping into the anterior axillary fold. I don't feel any lump there either. I'm finally going to do the posterior axillary fold. And I realize you can't see this on the video, but it's the same technique um, as the anterior axillary fold. And I don't feel any lump uh, or abnormality in the axilla. So you can go ahead and raise your gown, Nancy. 